Can this air superiority fighter land on an aircraft carrier? It is true this fighter is not designed to operate on aircraft carriers like the F-A-18 and F-35C, but it has an arresting hook. That being said, could the Raptor ever be seen on a carrier deck? To start with, let's see how fierce a carrier landing could be, and then move on to what technologies are being used to withstand the immense stress. During the deck landing, the arresting hook of this aircraft catches one of the cross-deck pendants laid across the carrier deck. As the aircraft moves forward with the cross-deck pendant, the purchase cable connected to the underdeck arresting engine releases, absorbing the kinetic energy. The MK7 arresting gear system fitted to the Nimitz-class carriers is capable of handling 48 million foot-pounds of energy. The system can stop an aircraft like the F-15 with a weight of around 50,000 pounds traveling at 130 knots within just 340 feet of runout. The carrier deck of an aircraft carrier takes the beating every time an aircraft lands or takes off. Engineers use high strength materials to withstand huge loads without any deformation. The most common material is steel. High strength, low alloy steel is preferred due to its high tensile strength. Moreover, this material offers greater resistance to corrosion than conventional steel. In addition to steel alloys, aluminum and composite materials are also being used for different parts of the carrier deck. The thickness of a carrier deck varies depending on many factors, including the nature of operation, area of the deck, expected impact loads, and the type of aircraft operating from the deck. Typically, the thickness of a carrier deck is around four inches. On top of the base material, the carrier deck is covered with several layers of coatings. Anti-slip coatings provide the necessary traction for aircraft, equipment, and personnel on the carrier deck. Another coating is used to improve the corrosion resistance of the deck to withstand the harsh marine environment. Landing on an aircraft carrier deck is believed to be one of the hardest actions a pilot would ever perform. Unlike landing on a usual runway, the pitching deck, challenging weather, and impaired visibility make this feat extremely challenging. Navy pilots undergo meticulous training to prepare themselves for arrested landings and catapult launches. With that said, chances of an untrained F-22 pilot landing on a carrier deck are overwhelmingly slim. Typically, deck landings inherit higher sink rates and touchdown speeds. This necessitates the use of robust landing gear and heavy-duty shock absorbers to withstand and dampen the higher impact load during the touchdown. As F-22 landing gear and associated structural components are not designed for the sudden dynamic load, they will probably collapse or sustain heavy damages upon the landing. The tail hook of a carrier-based aircraft has a sturdier build than one found in an Air Force fighter like the F-22. They can take sudden and repetitive loads and contain specialized spring mechanisms to minimize bounce during the touchdown. The arresting hook of the F-22 does not have the required profile for withstanding a sudden load. In the F-22, the arresting hook is placed inside an enclosed container to preserve the stealth of the fighter. Making an aircraft carrier capable starts at the design stage. The structure of the F-22 is not designed to manage the stresses of a carrier landing. The newest carrier-based fighter, the F-35C, has more wing and control surface area than the A and B models. This is to allow the fighter to attain much slower speeds without stalling, reducing the stall speed. Thus, carrier pilots can approach and land much slower, minimizing the severity of the impact. Here is the most intriguing part of the story. If the Raptor makes it to a carrier deck anyhow, it should take off from the carrier as well. When taking off from a carrier, the aircraft is catapulted off the deck with the help of a catapult launcher. To be catapulted, the aircraft should have compatible nose landing gear. A tow bar from the nose landing gear engages with the shuttle that catapults the aircraft. Moreover, a holdback device connects to the nose gear to hold the aircraft when it's under full power until the takeoff begins. As the F-22 nose landing gear is not equipped with any of these, the F-22 cannot be catapulted from a carrier deck. Another point to highlight is that the Landing Signal Officer, or LSO, is the one who authorizes a landing on an aircraft carrier. Knowing that an F-22 is attempting to land, no LSO would ever give it the green light for the arrested landing. 
If the Raptor is not meant to land on an aircraft carrier, even for an emergency, why does it have an arresting hook? The arresting hook in the F-22 Raptor is intended for emergency use on land-based runways only. Issues with the fighter's hydraulics, landing gear, brakes, or any other malfunction might require the use of the arresting hook. Some Air Force bases and civil airports, such as Barksdale Air Force Base and Honolulu International Airport, have permanent barrier arresting kits installed to facilitate arrested landings during an emergency. The installation is the barrier arresting kit, and BAC-12 or BAC-14 are the widely used models. The arresting procedure is identical to a carrier landing as the tail hook catches the cable laid across the runway. The energy is absorbed via a multi-disc rotary friction type energy absorber. The cable pays off as the aircraft moves forward. The BAC-12 system is used for catching aircrafts, basically. The importance of this is that if we don't have a system like this in place and there's some kind of aircraft emergency, in-flight emergency, this system is, is here to stop that aircraft from possibly crashing. Unlike a carrier landing, the aircraft does not come to a halt in a very short distance, but travels a distance of around 1,000 feet. And that's a wrap for today's video. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and there are more videos coming, so consider subscribing to The Intellect. See you next time.